California's coastline is collapsing right now, and nobody's talking about what happens next. Last week alone, three major cliff failures sent tons of rock crashing onto beaches below. Roads buckled without warning. Rail lines shut down in minutes. And here's what makes this terrifying. These weren't random events. They're connected by something scientists have been tracking for months, and the pattern they're seeing could change everything for millions of people living along the Pacific coast. The evidence is everywhere if you know where to look. Fresh cracks spider webbing across Highway 1, entire neighborhoods sliding inch by inch toward the ocean, emergency crews working around the clock to shore up failing infrastructure. But these visible disasters are just the beginning of something much bigger unfolding beneath our feet. What's happening along California's coast right now isn't normal winter erosion. For weeks, the Pacific has been throwing everything it has at these cliffs. Storm after storm rolls in from the ocean, each one dumping inches of rain that seeps deep into the ground. The soil becomes heavier, more unstable. Meanwhile, massive swells born thousands of miles away arrive at the worst possible moment, during king tides that lift the ocean several feet above normal. This creates a devastating one-two punch. Waves that usually break harmlessly on the beach now slam directly into cliff faces, reaching areas that have stayed dry for years. They carve away at the base while rain saturates the ground above. The result? Cliffs that have stood for decades suddenly can't hold their own weight anymore. The science behind this is both simple and terrifying. California's famous bluffs aren't made of solid granite. They're layers of sandstone, siltstone, and mudstone stacked like a poorly built cake. Between these layers hide seams of clay that act like slip and slides when they get wet. Every wave that hits the base of these cliffs carves out a little more support. Every rainstorm adds more weight to the top. Eventually, physics wins. Researchers from Scripps Institution of Oceanography have been mapping these cliffs with laser precision, and their findings should worry anyone living near the coast. Most unprotected bluffs are actively eroding. Not gradually, we're talking sudden failures that can send entire chunks of land, sometimes several meters wide, crashing down in seconds. The hotspots are already showing severe stress. Down in San Diego County, the Del Mar Bluffs support one of the busiest rail corridors in Southern California. Engineers monitor these cliffs 24-7 because they know what's at stake. The soft, fractured rock here has a nasty habit of failing without much warning, especially after heavy rains. Train operators get alerts when sensors detect even tiny movements, forcing them to slow down or stop service entirely. But Del Mar is just one piece of a much larger puzzle. Travel north to the Palos Verdes Peninsula, and you'll find the Portuguese Bend Landslide, one of the largest active slides in North America. This isn't some remote wilderness area. We're talking about hundreds of acres of prime real estate complete with roads, homes, and utilities, all sitting on ground that moves measurably every single year. Engineers in California this morning are struggling to develop a plan to remove huge amounts of debris after a devastating landslide. The landslide that has closed this scenic road is a monster that is still growing. The whole front just fell off. Yeah. <laughs> There's somebody on it. City reports paint a sobering picture. Some areas shift by inches annually, others move several feet. Roads need constant repaving as the ground beneath them buckles and cracks. Utility companies wage an endless battle to keep water and gas lines intact as the earth pulls them apart. Just upslope, fresh asphalt patches tell the same story. This ground doesn't want to stay put. So how do we know exactly what's happening beneath our feet? California has built one of the most sophisticated ground monitoring networks in the world, and the technology involved is mind-blowing. Aircraft equipped with LiDAR systems fire millions of laser pulses at the ground, creating maps so detailed they can detect changes smaller than your thumb. These flights happen after major storms or every few years, giving scientists before and after snapshots of how the coast is changing. But waiting years between measurements isn't enough when lives are on the line. That's where satellite technology comes in. Using radar interferometry, INSAR for short, satellites can detect ground movement down to the millimeter scale. They pass overhead every 6 to 12 days, comparing images to spot even tiny shifts in the landscape. The catch? 
Processing this data takes time, sometimes weeks, before it reaches the people who need it most. For real-time monitoring, nothing beats boots on the ground, undes, or rather, instruments in the ground. High-precision GPS stations anchor to bedrock track movement continuously, some updating every hour. In the highest risk zones, engineers have installed an arsenal of sensors. Inclinometers buried in boreholes measure how soil layers tilt and slip. Piezometers track groundwater pressure building after storms. Survey prisms and automated stations can detect movement within minutes, triggering immediate alerts. Yet even with all this technology, predicting exactly when a cliff will fail remains impossible. The data helps narrow down risk zones and inform emergency decisions, but nature keeps the final card hidden until the moment of collapse. When those sensors start screaming, the response system kicks into high gear. Caltrans district offices transform into command centers where engineers make split-second decisions that affect thousands of lives. A movement of just a few centimeters in the wrong place can trigger a cascade of actions. Lanes close, traffic reroutes, entire stretches of iconic Highway 1 shut down without warning. These aren't decisions made lightly. Every closure creates a domino effect. Coastal communities suddenly find themselves cut off from the outside world. What should be a 20-minute drive becomes a two-hour detour through inland valleys. Emergency services scramble to find alternate routes. Local businesses watch their customer base evaporate as tourists and locals alike avoid the hassle. The rail line above Del Mar faces similar challenges. When ground sensors detect acceleration in slope movement, trains immediately receive slow orders. If the movement continues, service stops entirely. For commuters who depend on these trains, a unstable bluff means missed meetings, lost wages, and hours of uncertainty. In residential areas perched above active slides, the stakes are even higher. City inspectors armed with the latest sensor data patrol neighborhoods, looking for telltale signs. New cracks in foundations, doors that won't close properly, walls beginning to separate. When they find them, decisions come fast. Red tags go up, families have hours to grab what they can and leave. The ground beneath their homes has crossed an invisible threshold from stable to dangerous. Utility crews face their own battles. Water and gas lines buried in unstable zones are monitored constantly. The moment sensors detect the ground beginning to pull apart, crews race to isolate threatened segments before a crack becomes a catastrophic failure. One broken gas line in the wrong place could turn a landslide into a disaster. So what happens next? The answer depends entirely on what the Pacific Ocean decides to throw at California in the coming weeks. If the storms ease up and dry weather returns, these saturated slopes might get a chance to stabilize. Water would slowly drain from the soil, reducing weight and increasing strength. Some roads and rail lines could reopen as engineers confirm movement has slowed. But this would only be a temporary reprieve. The long-term erosion would continue its patient work, setting the stage for future failures. If the storms keep coming, and weather models suggest they might, each new round of rain and surf will push these already stressed cliffs closer to their breaking point. Areas showing cracks in movement today could become tomorrow's emergency zones. More neighborhoods might face evacuation orders. More roads could close for extended periods. The infrastructure that coastal communities depend on would face increasing strain. The nightmare scenario arrives if nature aligns its forces perfectly. A major storm, massive swells, and king tides all hitting at once. In that case, waves would strike vulnerable bluffs at their absolute weakest moment. The results could be catastrophic. Sudden collapses taking out sections of highway. Emergency evacuations with no time for preparation. Entire neighborhoods red-tagged as uninhabitable. These aren't certainties, but they're very real possibilities that emergency planners lose sleep over. History shows us exactly how deadly these failures can be. In August 2019, a family gathered for a beach day at Grandview Beach in Encinitas. The weather was perfect. No storms, no earthquakes, no obvious danger. Then, without any warning, a massive section of sandstone bluff gave way. Three women died instantly, buried under tons of rock and earth. Several others suffered serious injuries. The entire tragedy unfolded in seconds. When geologists investigated, they found no single trigger. Instead, it was the accumulated effect of years of wave action and weathering, slowly weakening the bluff until it reached a tipping point. The cliff had shown warning signs, fractures, minor slides, but nothing that screamed immediate danger. After the tragedy, agencies increased monitoring and posted clearer warnings, but the fundamental risk remained unchanged. 
That same slow, patient force that brought down Grandview's Bluff is working on cliffs up and down California's coast right now. But today, the stakes are exponentially higher. More homes crowd the cliff edges, more critical infrastructure runs along unstable ground, and the storms are arriving with increasing frequency and intensity. The monitoring systems track every shift, every crack, every sign of instability. But monitoring isn't prevention, it's just an early warning system for the inevitable. California's coast is reshaping itself in real time, and human engineering can only do so much to hold back geological forces that have been at work for millions of years. Communities face impossible choices, adapt by building expensive seawalls that might buy a few decades of protection, retreat by moving infrastructure and homes inland, abandoning prime real estate to the ocean, or rebuild after each failure, knowing the next one is always coming. The land isn't waiting for these decisions to be made. Every high tide takes a little more, every storm weakens the cliffs a bit further, every sensor reading brings us closer to the next failure. The only certainty is change, and it's accelerating. Right now, as storms continue to batter the coast and king tides lift the ocean to near record levels, California stands at a crossroads. The choices made in the coming months about where to hold the line and where to retreat will shape coastal communities for generations. But nature has its own timeline, and it's not waiting for human consensus. The question isn't if more failures will occur, it's when, where, and whether we'll be ready when they do. For millions living along California's iconic coastline, that uncertainty has become the new reality. The edge is moving, and it's moving faster than ever before. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.